Let's pray and we'll get going. Father, in the name of Jesus, I just thank you that you love us. And Lord, I just pray that you minister to our hearts. And Lord God, I ask that you just touch this city, this area, this region, this state. In Jesus' name, amen. Yes. James 4. I'm just going to just give you a, a little, uh, I hope you can learn from me. Uh, if you can't, that's okay too. <laughs> but I'm just going to share with you uh, what my week was like. Um, lost my dad, and uh, you're dealing with the emotion of that. And then, and I was sharing this with Sandy, it's interesting how the devil just comes at you. I mean, with both barrels. I mean, I, I went through some stuff, and I want to share with you the end result, and it's good. But I just want you to understand that the Lord showed me a couple things. He said, and I'll, but I, I want you to think about this. Whatever you focus on, you magnify. And what he showed me was, was that there are people that have been in this situation for a long time. And they've magnified that situation in their life. And he's going to break that thing off of them. And they need our help. Because... I'll just share what went on. Uh, turn with me to James 4. And we'll get to going. But he gives us more and more. This is 4 verse 6. says, But he gives us more and more grace through the power of the Holy Spirit to defy sin and live an obedient life that reflects both our faith and our gratitude for our salvation. Therefore, it says, God is opposed to the proud and haughty, but continually gives the gift of grace to the humble her turn away from self-righteousness. So submit to the authority of God, resist the devil, and stand firm against him, and he will flee from you. And then verse 10, it says, Humble yourself with an attitude of repentance and insignificance in the presence of the Lord, and he will exalt you, and he will lift you up, and he will give you purpose. Um, 1 John three eighteen and 19 And you can turn over there. I'm not going to go there just a second. But I want to share with you. Now we'll go there. And this is what he'd been speaking to my heart about. And I just want to show you how this operates. Little children, believers, let us not love merely in theory with word or with tongue, giving lip service to compassion, but in action and in truth, in practice and in sincerity, because practical acts of love are more than words. By this we will know without any doubt that we are of the truth and will assure our heart and quiet our conscience before him. He's been talking to me about assuring my heart. And a lot of times, you know, when we're in the battle like what I've been through with my dad and then trying to get Brett into Chicago, you just, I mean, it's been a battle. I mean, you just cannot, I mean, I've been, and I mean, when you're drained emotionally with what's going on with your dad and then you're trying to get your son and then how my mind thinks, I'm a very detailed person. And so I have a car that my son pulled up to my house. I'll just give you a background on this vehicle. He pulled up to my house and it was about four quarts low of oil. I filled it full of oil, and it's making this rattling noise, and I'm not a mechanic. Stopped the rattling noise. I went down to, had the oil changed. We had the oil changed again within a week, and I changed it again. So in my mind, this motor is not very good, and I have to send him 568 miles in this vehicle, okay? So I keep telling him, check the oil. It wasn't his fault. There was an O-ring that would leaked, and he didn't realize, and this thing was just leaking oil, and we got the problem fixed, but now you have this motor that has this issue. So here's my son, 
and you see all those temperatures and all that freezing temperature of negative 65 and 56, and I'm thinking through my head, you know, these, th these thoughts are coming at me of this car, is it going to make it? Is it going to even start? Okay? And so I'm thinking, how am I going to get this kid? How can I get him back home? I even drove the car up to Chicago area just to make sure the vehicle would make it, you know? And it, you're in this situation where there's nothing you can do physically. All right? That's where I'm at. And so the last few days before sending him up there, I've been dealing with anxiety and fear. I would turn on the TV and you'd see the reports, you know, and I'm thinking, they canceled his flight. I mean, and so I'm sitting there and I mean, I'm thinking, God, how am I going to get this kid up here? You know, he's, he's missed a week of school already, you know, on and on and on. And I'm telling you, the enemy just, man, he's just trying to have a heyday. And I told Linda, I said, look, I'm having trouble with these thoughts. This thing is real. This attack is real. And it's not, you know. And I'm standing. I'm sitting there. And I started, well, Father, you know, your word says, you know. And it didn't feel like anything was happening. And I'm telling you, it felt like nothing was happening. But that doesn't mean that God isn't working. And so you, you got to realize that whatever your emotions are telling you, that's not a fact. That's not real. You may be feeling that, but it is not a truth. All right? So the next day, Brett gets to fly into Chicago. It's minus one. And I'm thinking, is his car going to start? Is his car going to start? Is his car going to start? Is his car? I mean, you know. And then he pulled into the area, and the gas, he didn't have much gas. Okay, he doesn't think, you know, like, oh, I should pull in, full, fill the tank, you know, before I leave. No, you know. So he gets in there. The car does start. I'm like, thank, well, let me, let me back up. So been praying, believing, standing. The Lord gives me a scripture. He says, I, have what, I know what you have need of before you ever even ask. And so I still don't have any peace. But as we get into the car and we start driving up to Salina, peace like a river just hits me. And I knew, you know what? God's got this. He has this. This is all good. He has it. Everything's going to work out. Okay? So we get up there. The flight comes. He heads up. Car starts. I'm like, praise the Lord. We're part of the way home here. All right? Well... Ten minutes into that, I have an attack again, an anxiety and fear about something. So I'm praying for this kid. I'm, I don't know why. I found out why later, and he would not call me and tell me. But on his way home, he's passing a semi, and there's a snowblower that's up ahead, and he's blowing all this snow, and Brett cannot see the other lane, and he passes this semi, and the next thing he knows, he has 10 yards, and there's the other vehicle that's heading on right at him. And so he just swerved. He didn't know if he had enough room to get by the semi. didn't know if he was by the semi. And we're talking slick, you know, roads a little bit, you know, not perfect. Thankfully, he got into the other lane and got home. And the whole time that this is going on, until he hit Mattoon, you know, what I'm getting at is I had peace about him flying up there, but the enemy's still coming at me still throwing those attacks. Now, granted, when I got that piece, there was a release, but yet I hadn't got what I wanted, and that's that victory, that total thing of, you know what, this thing is done. And what that's called, it's called wavering. Wavering means becoming unsteady or unreliable. I don't want to be that. It means to be undecided between two opinions or courses of action, undecided, irresolute, irresolute, indecisive, fluctuate, yo-yo, to and fro. You know, James talks about that. Well, I don't want to be like that, and I know you don't either. And, and, and what I'm getting at is that understanding that your father loves you is to the utmost importance of you getting this. Because that's what I fell back on, and that's what I started assuring my heart. And that's when I start telling you about assuring your heart that, you know what? God loves me. God is on my side. You know, and you start assuring yourself. 
and assuring that heart. And what the Lord showed me was, he said, assuring your heart is establishing your heart. It is also renewing your mind. It is also walking in the spirit. It, the concept is the same. You may hear somebody say, you need to renew your mind. You need, but that's what assuring your heart is. Assuring your heart is taking that scripture and looking at it and say, no matter what, Father, your word is true. No matter how I feel, because your feelings will not, they, they will lie to you. They will tell you things that this is not, this is this, you know. And it doesn't matter what those things are saying. It matters that you believe and you love and you trust what your Father has spoken to you. Amen? Amen. When I talk about Romans 8, Romans 8, and, and all of us need this. I need this. And what's funny is, is because we are a, a fallen vessel, um, some of us, we have to renew it. We have to get in it. We have to look at it and stay in it. Because I'll guarantee you, you go three days and your mind starts doing, thinking stupid things. Your mind, your emotions start telling you. You'll watch the news, you know. And you'll look, oh my gosh, look at our country. You know? I tell you, God's got this. And you have to assure your heart that he's got this. Amen? Yeah. Romans 8, 16 says, The Spirit himself testifies, confirms together with our spirit, assuring us that we are believers, children of God. And he told me, he said, fill in the blank. I said, what do you mean? He said, that you are righteous. Fill in the blank. You're not just a child of God, which that's, but you are healed. Fill in the blank. You're redeemed. Fill in the blank. You're blessed. Fill in the blank. And I said, man, that's good. The Lord gave me a prophecy through, through this young man right here. And he told me, he says, I'm gonna, he said I'm, you're going you're to find out who I am is. You're going to find out I am. I am. And I'm like, and I made it real spiritual. Okay, God, you're the great I am, I am. Hallelujah. <laughs> that's not what he meant. It's not even close what he meant. It's funny how we do things. You know, we're spiritual people. Praise God, you know. But I want to show you something that was pretty neat to me. That's not it. Well, I'll have to show you next time because I don't have it. I thought I saved it. But I saw something that, anyway, we'll go on. I'll share with that next time about I am and what he showed me. And, and he's given me more. This morning he gave me some more. I'm like, thank you. You know, what happens is as he starts talking to you, I call it concrete, okay? What concrete is, is, is that sometimes God will start showing you something and it will go against everybody else. And you, you're excited and you, hey, David, guess what God showed me? And David, he'll just tear it all up without even realizing and it's not because he's a bad guy and I'm a great guy. It's not that. It's that God is speaking to your heart and he's showing you something that he hasn't showed him yet, which is okay. Or he has a whole different perspective of it than you do. And that's okay too. But it's still the same concept. Amen? So anyway, what I'm getting at is he starts speaking to you and he starts giving you more and more concrete to where he is establishing that word in your heart and he is assuring it to where those roots are getting strong and deep. A lot of times people want fruit and they want to see all these great things and that's great. But I want great deep roots because that will take care of the fruit. And I'm telling you, that's where you want to go with your life. You want these truths to be so strong in you that nothing wavering, that you will not fade or waver, that you will stand strong through the, whatever that hurricane, whatever that storm is, whatever that's going on in your life, and you're going to be declaring and standing and fighting the fight and taking the kingdom. That's what it's about. So, John 10.10 10. And you know this scripture, 
The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy, and I come that you may have and enjoy life and have it in abundance to the full till it overflows. Well, who's the thief? You know the enemy's the thief. And he's going to come and try to steal. He's going to try to steal your joy. He's going to try to he's coming after the word is what he's really coming after. He wants to steal that word that's been put in your heart. You know, that's what he desires because he knows that word. When that word becomes assured in your heart, when that word becomes established in your heart, when that word becomes so solid in you to where now you're going to change not only your situation, but you may be able to change another person's situation because now you're going to share what God has been showing you in compassion toward that person and minister to them. They may be going through the same thing. Have you ever noticed, and I'm, I'm just asking questions, have you ever noticed how people will, uh, um, like they're like heavy into drugs, and where do they go back to? Who do they go minister to? They're in that same arena. Interesting, isn't it? How they feel compelled to go back. And it's because God given them revelation and they know that what they've got, they can help that person. And each of you have that kind of thing in your heart. There's people there that need to hear what God has done in your spirit, what he's done for your life. Amen? And I want to encourage you. Let it out. Go do it. You got this. Amen? Resistance. It's the refusal to accept or comply with something. I love this. The attempt to prevent something by action or argument. The last time I was talking to you, assuring your heart, you may have to look at yourself in the mirror and say, God loves you. You are anointed. When you lay hands on the sick, they recover. You have to convince. You have to argue. You have to... Use resistance against yourself. And you think, do I really have to? Yeah, I do. I mean, because my mind will tell me, you're no good. You're terrible. You stink. Blah, blah, blah. God will never use you. Blah, blah, blah. I mean, you know, on and on and on. And that's not true. That has nothing to do with anything. God wants to use each one of us. Amen? Assure means to tell something positively or confidently to dispel any doubts. Man, that's good. To dispel any doubts that they may have. Make something certain. To happen. To convince. To satisfy. To persuade. To guarantee. To promise. Man, them are good words. Can't you just sit there and let that soak in on you? You know, assuring yourself, you know. When I first got saved, I'll never forget, the next day the devil had told me, you're not saved, nothing happened. I mean, I'm like, nothing happened. Well, that's not true. But he was coming against my identity. You know, he did the same thing with Jesus. He said, are you the son of God? Are you the son of God? He's coming against your identity, telling you, no, you're not his kid. You're no good. You're not his heir. You're not healed. You're not righteous. It's always about your identity of who you are in Christ. That's what he's attacking because he knows that's really who you are. You are him. You are those things that God has qualified you for. And it's done through his son. Amen. But the battle, that's the area I think that we struggle with. And I've struggled with it. Not understanding what's my part, what's his part. What's my part, what's his part, you know. Um, my part is, is to renew my mind or to assure my heart or establish my heart. That's where the work comes in. You know, how do you do that? Well, you take scripture and you just start looking at it, studying it, meditate on it, think about it, pray about it, think about it, and keep that right there. And, you know, it's like the Lord gave me this, this vision of this stream running by, and I'm sitting there and I'm drinking from this stream, and I know enough not to stop drinking because he said drink. And I'm like, yes, sir, I'm drinking. I'm going to keep drinking. I'm going to keep. And what happens, it changes you from the inside out. And pretty soon there's overflow. I understand all that. So I'm sitting there drinking and I'm drinking and I'm drinking. I'm not going to stop drinking. And I'm going to keep drinking. And that's what happens. That's, a lot of people don't, they quit drinking. And I want to say, keep on. Keep drinking from that well. 
Keep drinking from that teaching. Keep drinking from that word, from those things that God is speaking to your heart. Whenever you get a word from the Lord, a personal word, man, take that, write that thing out and look it over and let it just, man, just keep meditating on it, thinking about it, meditating on it, and allowing that to just start assuring your heart, that's who I am. God said that's who I am. Not man. Didn't come from man. You know, I look at people, when, and, and I don't mean this, but I look at giftings. I don't look at people. And thank God we have a house where there's some great giftings running around here. I'll thank the Lord for that. Because it's important that those gifts come out and come forth and minister. Amen? Now, yeah, Hebrews 10. I want to go there. Then Hebrews 10, verse 23. 10.23 says, Let us seize and hold tightly the confession of our hope without wavering. For he who promised, I love this, he who promised is reliable and trustworthy and faithful to his word. Amen to that. I mean, that is God. God is faithful. And he's faithful to his word. And he is faithful to your prayers. I want you to understand that. That when you pray, things happen. You may not see it in the spirit. Like my situation, I didn't see anything happening. It was still cold. I didn't know if my son's going to make it. All this on and on and on. But yet, you stay in the fight. And if you need help, call somebody that will agree with you. And they'll speak over that situation. Because that's really what we're doing. And I love how Sandy talks about decreeing. I never thought of that. I thought, man, you, you, what decree is, it's a judgment. It's saying, this is what is happening. Nothing else but what this says, this statement. And this is what we believe. Amen? Now, I want to take the last few minutes, and there's these handouts, and I want to, I want to, I want to pray over these. And uh, I'm going to pass these out. I'm going to come up there. Okay. But I want to pray over this, over what's going on in our city. Amen? Anybody need one besides myself? I got one here. But I want to take the time to speak and you to speak over this. I love this. David did a great job on, on just him waiting on the Lord. You know, this is very prophetic in my opinion. And what I mean by that is, uh, you know, when, God, when a person waits on the Lord and this is what God speaks to their heart, that's prophetic. That's, that's prophetic. You know, I, I wait on the Lord, asking the Lord for a message. It's prophetic. It's walking in the prophetic. I don't know if you understand that, but that's how that works. And so uh, I just want to take a little time and just uh, pray. Amen? Praise you, Father. Praise you, Jesus. Father, we just come and we resist. We resist the enemy. And those things, Father, that he's come against this move of what you're trying to do. Father, we know that it's assured in our heart, Father, that your desire is for us to have this meeting, these meetings, Father. I come against the enemy in the name of Jesus. And I speak to you. And I command you to go. I command unbelief and doubt. I come against those spirits in the name of Jesus. And I break you in Jesus' name over my city. In the name of Jesus. And Lord, I come against pride, Father. And haughtiness, Father. And Lord, let us be humble before you, Father, in the name of Jesus. That Lord God, it's a move of you and what you're doing in our, in our, in our midst, Father. And we recognize that, Father, and we're thankful for that in the name of Jesus. 
Father, we just thank you for the outpouring of your spirit, Father. Lord God, that you're moving with your spirit, Father, in the meetings, that, Lord God, it will flow smoothly. And, Father, it won't be, it will be as signs to the unbelievers like the early church, Father, that, Lord, there'll be signs following your word spoken, Father. Lord, I pray for the salvation of the souls, Father. Lord, the ones that don't know you, Father, that come, Father. I'm, I'm praying, Father, that you just bring them home in the name of Jesus, that the prodigals will come home, Father. I pray, Father, for the preparation of the hearts, Father. Lord, that you'd prepare not only the speaker's hearts, Father, but also the hearts of all the workers and all the people that are coming to the meetings, Father. That, Lord God, that the ground would be plowed on their heart and they'd be softened. That they would not harden their heart, Father, when they hear your word, Father, but rather they'd come with repentance, Father. In the name of Jesus, I give you praise, Father. And, Lord, I just thank you, Father, for the church. And, Father, that they're prepared to do kingdom business as we are this morning, Father. Lord God, we just want to just set ourselves in agreement for what you're doing, Father. In the name of Jesus, I thank you for healing, Father, for, Father, miracles, Father, for, Father, wonders to flow in the name of Jesus. Thank you for this, Father. Thank you, God. Thank you for your manifest presence, Father. We love you. We give you praise, Father. We thank you for the unity, Father, and the harmony of your spirit, that, Lord God, we're going to continue in that, Father. In the name of Jesus, I thank you for the blood, Father, that washes white as snow, Father, that cleanses, Father, in the name of Jesus, that makes these people, every person, Father, in your eyes, right with them. Thank you for what your son has done. I thank you for the protection of the pastoral leadership and the ministry's leadership, Father, that, Lord, you protect them like you did my son, Brett. Thank you for that, Father. Thank you for continuing, Father, in Barton County, in our state, Father, that you're going to move there. But, Father, first, first you're going to move in Great Bend, Kansas. And that, Father, it'll go out. That it'll go out. And that it won't stop. But it'll touch our nation, Father. I declare it. And I decree it, Father. Thank you for good weather. And thank you, Father, that we love one another as Christ loved the church. That, Lord, that we lay down our lives for one another. That we always encourage one another. That we always, Father, always love you. And share that love with each other so that they'll know that they're really around people who are Christians who love you, Father. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you for praying. Thank you. Father. And I want to encourage you to continue um, to pray and speak his word over this meetings and over not only just your own life but over this meetings that we're getting ready to have and I'm excited about it can't wait um, and I would encourage you to uh, volunteer be a part um, get involved you know with anything you can do you know Lynn and I are going to watch little ones <laughs> hallelujah so we're excited about that. We have to get our get all the checks, all that, you know, which is good. They need to do a background check on me, I'll guarantee it. But anyway, but we're excited about that, to be able to love on those little people, you know. Kind of like having a dog around, you know. Sit. <laughs> Speak. No. <laughs> Kidding. Anyway, thank you.